you had just put, laid down on the couch, had you exactly. not on the bus? Yes. I was on my way to a concert, mm -hmm. and I took a nap to be fresh, and I opened my eyes and thought we were there because the bus had stopped, and then boom, explosion. Two seconds later, we didn't know. We got rear-ended by a fully loaded 18-wheeler, which is only the biggest thing, bigger, bigger thing than a tour bus. And was that when you, when the bond became even stronger? That much stronger, because those, those things can either tear you apart. Yeah, it, it tears most people apart, It you does, know, because it's tattoo. hard to handle. He didn't leave my side for, for a moment. He would walk me every 45 minutes, because I couldn't sleep more than that without pain, and he would, you know, sit me up, bathe me, lay me down, move me, and mm. my dad was in a wheelchair. I had lived that experience, so, I was very clear that I was going to do everything in my power. Not to be in a wheelchair. Yeah, if I had to end up there, fine, I was going to. But I knew what it meant for the family. So it made my physical therapy uh, easier to take. And I would spend six, seven hours a day mm -hmm. at it some way because I knew that this is the kind of commitment it would take. And at first, I just wanted to walk again. After that, I thought, OK, maybe this could be an example for the people that know me, the fame side, maybe this was a reason, because I, right. I never liked being the center of attention. What, the fame, the fame attention? Part. And then I thought, maybe this was the whole point of me becoming famous, to now go through something like this in the public eye and hopefully show people how much power we actually have and, and what we can do to, to help change our destiny. Because the truth is, be. you know, when you're going through th something like that, your money, your fame can't Just get you up out exactly. of that chair. Exactly, no. Yeah. It but means nothing. It means nothing. In one minute, everything changed. Now, the prayers, yes. That, that was one thing that I learned from that experience, the power of prayer, because there were so many millions of people worldwide. Rooting for you. Yes, and I felt it. I felt like I was plugged into the wall. I, and I would meditate and bring it in and imagine nerves reconnecting and doing what they call visualization now. They use it in a lot of therapies and, and when people get sick. Did you ever deal with that moment of maybe I won't be able to get out of the wheelchair again? You dealt. Did yes, you I go did. There? You have to. You, you have know, to. It, grief is like that because while you're going through something so traumatic, the adrenaline is getting you through the people's prayers. Right. When I got home and I realized that I couldn't take two steps down a little like incline because it had no rail, or that I couldn't sit up by myself, lay down, I couldn't do anything without the help of someone else. Yeah. I, I got very depressed, and it took, for about 10 days, I would just cry in any, any little moment. And then after that, I recognized it, because I studied psychology, I was so no part of the spiel, and now. Uh, you recognize your stages of grief. Yes, yeah. and I said, you know what, okay. Been there, done that, pull yourself by the bootstraps, and let's move forward, because it's a waste of time.